Hi everybody, hope you're all doing good out there. So recently I've been doing lots of research about fuels and synthetic fuels and future battery technologies and as you've seen from the videos, well I learned something in the middle of that that's slightly more concerning for many people I'm sure, so I'm going to highlight it here and it's in regard to E5 fuel. A quick bit of background if you don't know the difference, basically E5 fuel was our standard unleaded petrol pre-2021. What they then introduced was E10. Now, E5, E10 just means ethanol 5%, ethanol 10%. Ethanol 10%, E10, that they introduced in 2021, as I say, has 10% ethanol on it, and the reason they did this is it reduces emissions. However, some people have also found they get a lot less miles, so maybe it doesn't work out. I, I haven't really checked on that side of things, but the point is, this is the changes they made. The old super unleaded was replaced with E5, and standard unleaded became E10. If you were lucky enough to be in next to a station which sold both grades, if you were a petrol station that had unleaded and diesel, and that was it, because it was a small one, they may have switched to E10 and never been able to give you E5 because they don't have the tanks to do it. Uh, and obviously being more expensive, E5, less people use it. So apparently more than 70% of classic car owners are having problems finding E5 fuel. Why do they need E5? Why can't they just use the E10? Long, short, really simple. Some old cars, if you put E10 in them without much ethanol, the ethanol is going to degrade rubbers and seals and stuff within the engine and cause it to break. Uh, you can replace these seals with modern seals that can deal with it. And you can possibly, I think there may be even some like timing things that may have to get changed with some engines. But the point is, it can be done to keep them going. But it obviously it's very expensive to take an entire old classic car apart and replace every single seal. That's if you could get hold of one of those seals. You know, it depends on the car. So some people absolutely still need E5. There's nothing they can really do about it. Yes, there's some additives and stuff that you can get. I'm, I'm not sure if that solves it for everyone. But anyway, I digress. You then have more modern bikes, like this bike and my XJ6 and the you know modern, modern bikes, which can run on, that say they can run on E10. But there is a difference. The modern bikes seem to run on E10, no problems. My bike, although there is no damaging factors to run it on E10, it just doesn't like it, in my experience. Uh, same my XJ6, it's more pronounced in the winter. I know, obviously, in the cold, bikes don't like starting, but there is a pronounced difference between the two, in my opinion. Like, when my XJ6 is warming up, it almost sounds like it's knocking, even though the extra 10% of ethanol has been put in there to stop knocking, to my understanding, because of something else they've, because they've reduced the octa. I'm not entirely sure, okay, but what I do know, and the thing that I discovered is this. Apparently, the plan to leave E5 on sale was at a maximum of only five years after E10 goes on sale. In other words, the current plan, although it's not proposed as such, is that in 2026, they will stop selling E5 fuel. Now, as I say, this is not confirmed, but it goes along with the, th the plans that they had to start with. And I'm not the only one that's noticed this. And there's a few little, uh, I've seen a few articles out there where people are saying, hmm, so what happens in 2026? You've not said anything, but you have said that it probably shouldn't be on sale for more than five years. Reality is it probably is going to go to review and then they'll decide whether they should remove E5 at that point or not. Maybe depending on how many people are having a problem. But there is in the point. A lot of you people, I know this because I make videos on batteries and stuff and you have a go at me. Um, <laughs> you like your petrol motorcycles, as do I. I just like electrics too. Uh, and I would very much like to continue riding my petrol motorcycle for as long as it, it survives, you know? If it was made before the ban in 2030, 2035, whenever it's going to happen, if it even happens, whatever. I'll just, again, I'm, I'm trying to be, I don't want to argue in this one. I'd like to keep running this bike. And as I say, lots of people have said that to me, like, well, I'm just going to keep using petrol. That's grand and all, but you might only have the choice of E10 at that point. It's kind of like, I guess what this video is about is be like, look, it's a possible problem that could come up that I think the biking community and classic car owners and car owners should be aware of if you use E5. Well, that's actually the easiest way of saying it, isn't it? If you use E5, well, then you'll care about this. If you don't use E5, you probably don't give to. You see, for my example, as I've said, if they ban E5 and I can only get hold of E10, it won't be the end of the world. My bikes still run. 
uh, they don't like it that much they don't run as well as they could but anyway it doesn't change the fact that yeah there, there is this sort of when e10 was brought in they did make the suggestion that e5 would only be on sale for five years and they didn't say like a minimum they said a maximum of five years it should not be on sale for any longer than that amount of time i'd be interested to know if you're one of the people that absolutely needs to have e5 to protect your vehicle uh, do you know about the alternatives could you give us some information on what what options there are if they were to phase out e5 and, and leave it with e10 if you've heard any more about this then please do add that as well as so a basically if you've got any more info that can you know flesh out our understanding of how this could affect things and, and obviously the sides of it that I've not considered because I only found out about this a few days ago and I've just been like, I need to talk about this. Then do that in the comments. So yeah, big thanks to my patrons who make this channel possible by supporting it for as little as a dollar a month, pound a month. Uh, there are many benefits to that. I will also point out here that there, I think that, that Patreon had some card issues this month and quite a few people had errors with their payments not going through. So if you are a patron of mine, just double check because i know a lot of you don't even use the service you just support the channel which is incredibly kind of you i'm just like you, you want to support it for nothing in return thank you uh, but anyway point is check that your your card is actually working because quite a few people stopped working see if you can uh, glance that arse cheek on the like button on your way out and i'll catch you next time bye bye